1955, a young poet named Allen Ginsberg, discouraged by the materialism and strict conformity of the times, rebuked 1950s America in a poem he titled Howell. It would mark the start of a new literary generation, a group of writers who began to break the straight lines, the boundaries that were constricting the possibilities of society. Collectively, they became known as the Beats, and though their ideologies were cultivated on the East Coast in New York City, it was on the West, San Francisco, where their writings would strike a most delicate chord. Jack Kerouac, Allen Ginsberg, William Burroughs, uh, a guy named Lucian Carr, and a very small group of people. They fell in with a guy named Neil Cassidy, and Neil was living in San Francisco, so they started visiting San Francisco and discovered that in some ways, San Francisco is even more their natural home than New York. They, they moved out and they found that it was a perfectly sympathetic uh, uh, environment for them. If you're looking for a place that's more open to alternative ideas, creative ideas, if you went west looking for them, the farthest you could go is San Francisco. It's an unusual city in a lot of ways. I mean, it has perfectly conventional aspects. And particularly back in the 50s, it was politically relatively conservative. But underneath, there was always this room for, for strangeness and for poets and for creative people. And uh, the, the beats, the, in particular, Jack and Alan, uh, took to it like a duck to water. Settling in San Francisco's North Beach neighborhood, the beats began attracting a following. Many made their way west, drawn by the prospect of a different way to live. The timing was apropos, because just as the Beatniks were gaining a foothold in the Bay Area, LSD was making its debut in the general public, owed in large part to a man named Owsley Stanley. He was the, the grandson of a senator, and he had an LSD experience, and he thought, to him, this was something that could change the world for the better. And he learned how to make it, and he made something like 60,000 doses and began spreading it around San Francisco. And one of his uh, early clients was uh, an author named Ken Kesey. Ken, uh, you know, really, he, he came out of the, the beat world, the, the sort of an intellectual, but his his point of view was, was very much out of, you know, out of step with the mainstream America. Kesey, who went on to write One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, had been a volunteer test subject for the CIA's MK Ultra project and became enamored with the effects of LSD. But unlike all the academics uh, who were working with this and the psychiatrists, uh, he didn't really want to study LSD, he wanted to ride the wave. And so he began having these huge blowout parties with a group of his friends, and they called themselves the Merry Pranksters. And uh, these were, they dubbed these acid tests. These parties, literally over two months, went from 50 people to 5,000. So it was just this became this gigantic cultural phenomenon, and it began to spread to college campuses. From the minds of the Beats flowed a renewed perception of the world that collided with the rise of psychedelics and melded together. They'd light a fire underneath the youth of America. <laughs>